many of us in the audience know Professor David Cooper very well. David is a great mind person, a great heart, a great doctor, a great scientist, researcher, a great leader, a great inspirer, and one of our great friends. David, you and your wisdom are always in our heart, and your mission is now continuing by many of us. We always miss you, David. It's my great honor to keep this memorial lecture for Professor David Cooper. My talk is the update on July COP19 mRNA vaccine development at uh, Jula Vaccine Research Center in Bangkok. In the last two years, we have been facing a serious pandemic of COVID-19. And all the global society, healthcare system, and economy has been hit very hard up until now and maybe uh, a few years ahead. One of the record breaking in science is the COVID-19 vaccine development. Never before in the history that again, only one pathogen scientist, researcher was in academia and the biotech company has been working on COVID-19 candidate vaccine more than 200 vaccine candidates. And now at least 113 vaccine had been on clinical trial or finished. Some of them has been authorized, 16 authorized, nine has been approved uh, for clinical use. So it's really a, a record breaking in terms of the speed of the vaccine development, the number of vaccine development, technology platforms, particularly new technology platform, three of them has been authorized or approved. Among them are mRNA vaccine, viral vector vaccine, and DNA vaccine. And the efficacy is also very remarkable, particularly by the mRNA vaccine. And now, if you look at the vaccination tracker globally, up to a 10 billion doses of vaccine has been delivered globally uh, with the average of 35 million doses a day. I have covered by a traditional technology, which is also saved many people like, which is uh, inactivated vaccine. Another uh, 2 billion doses covered by mRNA vaccine, another 2 billion by viral vector vaccine. But the challenge remain ahead in terms of inequity to access COVID-19 vaccine. And you look at the dark green is mean, the darker green is mean the earlier that had been the higher proportion of population has been full vaccinated. But if you look at the big hole in this continent, the African continent, less than 20% of people had been fully vaccinated. In some country, even less than 5%. So the evidence is so strong that no one is safe until everyone is safe. So now we are facing Omicron, a very highly transmissible valence and many more to come until we make everyone set, then one will be set. Jula Vaccine is a center. Uh, we have been working uh, on another technology platform, subunit protein, DNA, viral light particle. Right now we move to mRNA vaccine technology platform and with the goal to make it more accessible in low and middle income countries. This is because of the, in the 
past several years, we have been uh, collaborating with one of our good friends, Professor Drew Weisman. He's one of the pioneers of MNA technology. And I'd like to invite uh, many of you or all of you that are interested to listen to these uh, great three scientists who discover this technology platform, MNA and lipid nanoparticle, uh, who are our honorable speaker. Uh, recently, the, the three of them received Prince Mahidon Award uh, 2021 and going to give us uh, uh, in person uh, a, a talk on this technology, how this technology or this discovery can help global health fighting again pandemics. Now, I'd like to share with you here is the uh, milestone and the timeline of our uh, July COP19 mRNA vaccine had been developed so far. Uh, so in the early last year, uh, we, even before we, we have learned that uh, mRNA vaccine like Pfizer and Moderna work the best in terms of uh, efficacy, up to 95% efficacy against COVID-19 symptomatics. And uh, we start working on that and it's, it has shown a very strong uh, induction in animals, uh, small animal and uh, in, in non-human climate. And then uh, at that time, we don't have uh, manufacturing technology yet in Thailand or even in Asia. So what we did is we worked with uh, two CMO in the US and to making our clinical lot. And it's have been taken quite long because we don't have that technology. Uh, so we spend overall uh, by negotiation, finding the right uh, CMO and starting making it. Uh, we start phase one in mid of June. And, uh, and then uh, and then we now uh, have finished uh, phase two. And the Thai uh, biotech company, Bionet AG, already got all the technology transfer and start making uh, a locally a clinical batch for phase two, three trial in the very near future. The difference between our uh, immunogen design versus uh, the authorized Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, this, the same technology platform is a modified nucleoside uh, uh, techniques. Uh, the antigen is different because most people believe that you need to stabilize uh, perfusion spike protein uh, to make it as, uh, uh, a stable. Uh, but uh, in our case, B is uh, a non-stabilized by mRNA protein and the lipid nanoparticle also from different uh, formulation. Uh, so. July COP19 uh, is uh, right now among many other mRNA vaccine, uh, both against uh, COVID and non-COVID in entering phase two. Now I'm going to share with you the clinical results. Uh, and you can see that uh, we have uh, finished the and complete the enrollment and then finished the interim analysis of two phase one study and one phase two study. So we really grateful to all of the dedicated volunteer and our uh, development team. This is to, to summarize in brief that uh, how the phase one study design ha has been performed. So um, we have seen the, the phase one report of uh, Pfizer Moderna uh, very clearly that is uh, the vaccine is very immunogenic. Uh, so we start with a uh, only small sample size to identify those that in between uh, lower than Pfizer, in between Pfizer and Moderna, and to identify optimum dose for our immunogen. So we start uh, with the 10 and then move up to 25 as a dose escalating design into 50 microgram. This is a two dose uh, schedule, uh, three weeks apart. Uh, the primary endpoint a safety and the second endpoint immunogenicity. And we also have performed an exploratory comparative study 
uh, with the Pfizer vaccinated cohort and also with the convalescent uh, uh, SILA. Uh, I'm sorry that this is a quite a busy slide, but uh, to, uh, to illustrate that uh, vaccine and in phase one, it's uh, in general, it's safe and uh, no serious adverse event. It's a dose depend it's a dose dependent and also the second dose will have more both local and, and systemic uh, AE. Most of the AE are in green, so it's mean mild, uh, a few in moderate and uh, very rare in, in, in severe uh, grade three, but all are uh, this, uh, recover within within the, in average of two and a half day. And you can see that uh, the old age group has a lower, this is a compare 10 microgram, a uh, younger and older age group and 25 microgram in all uh, AE that uh, older age group has lower, significantly all lower uh, AE. And now look at the immunogenicity results. And this is the anti-spike, it's a white high spike. It, without uh, dipolene. Um, so you see that this is a, a dose dependent, 10 microgram in blue, uh, 25 microgram in orange, and, uh, and 50 microgram in pink. Uh, the left panel is the younger age group, 18 to 55, and the right panel is uh, older age group. Uh, and you can see that uh, the lower dose uh, peak uh, later, so at the day 50 is a four weeks after the second dose uh, compared to uh, the higher dose of uh, 50 microgram uh, reaching the peak uh, faster. Uh, in terms of surrogate uh, neutralization uh, assay, this is the uh, RBD ACE2 uh, binding inhibition assay. Uh, and you can see that uh, Low dose also be able to reach at day 50 above 90%, but it, uh, at day 25 is not uh, at that point yet. Uh, 50 microgram had reached uh, more than 90, 90% uh, seen the earlier. And uh, this is compared with in green is Pfizer 93% and the uh, convalescence Sera is 76%. This is the result of the live virus micro-neutralizing assay. Uh, look at the 4-4 rising, or what we call the zero conversion rate. Um, if we look at the one week or day 29, one week after the second dose, uh, only 50 microgram of Julacop-19 and uh, BioNTech Pfizer vaccine reach 100%. But after day 50, all doses reach uh, 100% zero conversion rate. Um, this is the comparison between dose of uh, live virus neutralization uh, test. Uh, the units is IU per mil uh, compared with the two age group, adult and elder, elderly. Um, it's a very similar pattern of uh, you know, the kinetics the lower dose uh, uh, peak a bit later, uh, and the lower dose uh, have a drop, significant drop when uh, you vaccinate in the older uh, population. Uh, 10 microgram had five four drop in elder people, uh, 25 microgram and 50 microgram drop about uh, 2.5 four. And this is the uh, neutralization uh, the GMT of Pfizer 500 and the zero converter, uh, conversion zero is uh, 260. And, and, and this confirmed by another assay, a functional assay, pseudo virus neutralization test, uh, similar finding. Uh, and uh, the, the big drop uh, in I mean, getting older in the lower dose uh, and lesser drop in the mid dose and uh, less further lesser dark and the uh, higher dose. And as compared to the green is a uh, Pfizer uh, BioNTech vaccine and the uh, uh, purple is the silo converter. And uh, 
as we have seen in the animal study that uh, the magnitude of antibody titer neutralizing again Y tie is so high, even this drop significantly again valence, but it's still high enough to cross neutralize uh, alpha, beta, and delta, in particular in the uh, higher dose of 50 microgram. Lower doses didn't perform very well again delta. And this confirm again with, uh, that's the live virus neutralization. This is the pseudo virus neutralization assay. I highlight the one that outstanding is the, in the adult beta is fairly high uh, against a beta, which is really one of the uh, most difficult to, to neutralize uh, using a white high based vaccine. And, and the delta also stand out very really, uh, significantly in terms of uh, uh, 50 microgram dose as compared to Pfizer and Moderna, uh, Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine in green. How about the T cell response? In this case, gamma interferon uh, Eli spot assay uh, result uh, showing as the spot forming uh, gamma interferon producing cell or spot or per million PBMC. Uh, on the left hand panel is the youngest group, and the right hand panel is the oldest group. Um, um, it's uh, really similar to what we have seen in antibody response. In the oldest group, the lower dose have a two fold drops uh, in the 10 microgram and 2.7 fold drop in 25 microgram, but really consistent in a 50 microgram. And all of these uh, profile CD4 and CD8 specific response is, uh, is showing at the TH1 predominant with the TH1, TH2 ratio greater than uh, 1.8 or 2 in, in all doses. So 50 microgram by our DSMB recommendation had been selected to go for phase two trial. Now, in terms of the uh, phase two trial, it's a, it's a RCT, uh, evaluator blinded, four to one ratio. Um, so this is the, the age group is 18 to 59, 120 uh, received July COVID-19, 50 microgram, two doses, three weeks apart intramuscularly, another three, 30 received placebo, it's a, a, a normal saline for 29 days of uh, average of, of one month, and then all switch to receive Pfizer BioNTech vaccine two dose, three week interval. Safety is a primary endpoint and the immunogenicity is secondary endpoint. Uh, here are the adverse events. You can see that uh, uh, first dose, there's no fever at all. Uh, both the placebo and the control. Interestingly, the placebo effect uh, to induce uh, headache related is higher in the first dose in placebo arm, almost double, uh, 37% compared to the July COP-19 uh, first dose, and 30% fatigue by placebo and 40 by July COP-19. A fever at the second dose is uh, high up uh, at uh, you know, max, uh, July COP19 up to 24% versus zero in placebo. Now, anti RBD antibody respond uh, in blue is the July COP19 uh, placebo here in the middle, and the uh, the placebo after 29 days switched to Pfizer BioNTech. So this is the result, and you can see that at day 29 day 20 and day 50, so four weeks, uh, it's clearly that the geometric mean title ratio with, uh, uh, against uh, uh, Pfizer-BioNTech uh, is 1.84 higher with the p-value below 0, 0, 001. And this is the uh, statistic analysis of uh, at day 50. You can see that it's a uh, highly significant about 1.84 of July COP. Uh, anti-RBD antibody against uh, Pfizer BioNTech. In terms of live virus neutralization, uh, 
it's really clear again that uh, uh, it's uh, higher, about four, 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 2.7 uh, ratio, again, Pfizer and p-value below uh, 0, 0, 0,01. So this is the Jula Cup 19 placebo, Pfizer, and zero converter. Uh, uh, this is convalescent sealer. And, and you can see that this is the p-value of on day 29 of live virus micro-neutralizing test, 850 titer versus, uh, this is the, not the IU per mil, this is the, 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 the unconverted, but you can see the ratio is, is still the same, two, four, and 2.74 with the p-value at on day uh, 50, again, Y ties below 0, 0, 001. Uh, it also confirmed again by, the pseudo wireless neutralization test, this is converted into IU per mil, again, white high. Uh, it also, and also when we compare again delta, this is compared delta by pseudo wireless, it's also 1.74 higher than Pfizer uh, vaccinated uh, sealer. And this is the statistical result. You see that uh, white high, day 29, day 50. And then on day 20, uh, 50, a uh, 2.84 higher with the p-value below 0, 0, 001. And with Delta also, uh, the ratio uh, between Jula COP19 versus Pfizer MyOntex is 1.7. The p-value is 0.1. Uh, T-cell confirm what we have seen in phase one, uh, that the, uh, on day 29, with uh, more than uh, 1,900 uh, spot forming cell per million cell versus versus uh, 800, and the, this is the ratio is 2.24 with a p-value uh, below 0, 0, 001. Again, this is the statistical analysis comparison. So, in summary of our interim results of both phase one and phase two. Uh, the vaccine Jula COP19 at 50 microgram, two dose, three weeks apart, intramuscularly is well tolerated. There was no ciliate adverse event. Uh, again, in terms of induction B cell, specific B cell response, uh, Jula COP19 able to induce high neutralizing in the body, again, white high. And although, again, valine is a significant drop, several fold, but is still high enough to cross neutralize alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, in particularly delta, the, and uh, also induce high T cell response. Uh, phase two, Jula COP19 is superior than Pfizer BioNTech vaccine in all specific immunogenic city tested uh, result had been shown. How about the next generation vaccine? Again, new variants. Uh, we have now facing one of the most transmissible uh, valence Omicron and also escaping uh, significantly again the Curlin vaccine, particularly two dose vaccine. So among five uh, vaccine of uh, valence, uh, you know, uh, divided by the WHO, uh, we have in green is mean we have prepare the prototype immunogen of alpha, beta, and delta. And now we are working on Omicrons. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, a few weeks, we should be able to test in animal. So this is, has been tested in animal. Uh, based on the phase one results, uh, the government has, uh, the cabinet has approved 2.3 billion uh, Thai baht to support our uh, Jula COP19 mRNA vaccine development uh, for uh, the larger scale trial and for the legislation. And we have been working with our strategic uh, uh, biotech company in Thailand, Bionet Asia, has been listed right now among one of the 10 manufacturer company beside Pfizer and Moderna. So now we are working uh, the Clinical batch uh, made in Thailand by Bernard Asia has been finished and the, uh, has passed all the uh, quality tests. Now we're working with our 
regulator, the Thai FDA, uh, to plan for the next step of clinical development, the last step. Thank you very much for your kind attention and thank you all the volunteer, my collaborator, both within Chula Longkorn University, within Thailand, and our great friends, uh, Professor Drew Weisman and his team. And all the clinical team, collaborators, and the funder, the Thai government, the National Vaccine Institute, and the National Research Council. And one third of the funding for phase one and two also coming from a corporate and public donation. Thank you very much.